everyone, Wilson Bugembe is my name. I'm a pastor, uh, Uganda, Kampala, the worship house, or call it Light the World Church. I am a believer. I love young people. I am, um, what? I, uh, yeah, I, I love Jesus Christ. I'm the, lead, the team leader of uh, our church. I am the president of Master Child Care Orphans. That's a, a village for, the, for people like me who, who lost everything. I am um, also a goodwill ambassador for World Vision. And I am, um, I am nothing without Jesus. And uh, I come from a really poor background. I'm here because of God. When did I meet Jesus? I met Jesus, I can't remember. I met Jesus so many times. <laughs> so many times when I was still a kid, when I was still growing up. But uh, I think the real time that I gave my life to Jesus, I can't remember the date, but I think I was in S2 at Highway College, McKinley. I don't remember the date, but uh, they preached about hell and heaven. And uh, I started to ask myself if I died, where would I go? And uh, my, my coming to Jesus had nothing about visa, car, house or land. It was more, okay, Jesus can take away all that, but Jesus can give you life after you die. Because remember, everyone was dying in my family. So for me, death was very tangible. So I started to ask, where is my mom, where is my dad? So I, I gave my life to Jesus. I remember in school, we used to sing a song. And if they mentioned that day you gave your life to Jesus, you stand up and sing. The song was like, glory, glory, somebody touched me, glory, glory. My sins were deep and I no shame my sins were higher than the mountain. Sins were deep and I no shame when the Lord set me free. Then they would go like, It was a Monday, somebody touched me. It was a Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. If they mention the day you stand up, but I, can't, I couldn't remember the day. So I, they could they sing for me, It was, I don't know, <laughs> but I know he touched me. Uh, no, 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 don't. People in Jesus, they're like people living in a bubble. They're like people, you know, you have to, you, you never know, but um, Jesus is the only perfect thing a man can, have, can ever have. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a, a pastor, what? but uh, cars fade. Have you looked at your father's wedding photos? The cars they used, the gown they used, you'd be like, oh my goodness, how can you wear that? But by that time it was, you know, have you seen, the, 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 they show the great man like Idi Amin, yeah. uh, or, or Bote, I'm just, the cars and the convoy, by then that was a big deal. The uniforms and the hairstyle, you look like everything has faded away. So it looks like everything fades away. Look at this beautiful place where we are, give it 50 years. It's going to be, oh, you'll be like, what were you doing? You're just standing there doing nothing. But the thing is, Jesus is the only person that a man can have and hold on to. You know, you know, you know even Coca-Cola can change its taste. Even salt can change its taste. But Jesus doesn't change its taste. He loved sinners. He loves sinners. He will love sinners. Presidents change. Uh, be, politicians change. Pastors change. Churches change. But Jesus doesn't change. He hated sin, he hates sin, he will hate sin. He, he, he hates sin, but he loves sinners. He has made his point clear. And uh, for me, I've never regretted. I, I can't say that uh, I have walked a straight path. I've fallen away. But Jesus has been like, uh, you know, Peter, when he was sinking in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the water, Jesus gave him his hand and said, don't take your eyes off me. So that's, that's what Jesus told Peter. If you don't want to sink in life, don't take your eyes off Jesus. You know, I've, I've seen Jesus heal HIV. I've seen Jesus heal cancer. I've seen Jesus heal what others couldn't heal. I've seen Jesus do what my father could not do for me. Like, like Snatcher says, only you can do what no man can do. That's a very true statement. Yeah, so I've never regretted. Yeah, it's me who has disappointed him, but he's always been the father in Luke, Luke 15. Uh, he's, I don't know how many times I've been a prodigal son, but he's, he's always been that father that waits for you to come home. 
gives you a hug and, and does a party for you and gives you a nice linen cloth and, and throws a party for you. And then others say, why? Why are you doing, throwing a party? He's a sinner. That's, I think Jesus is that father of the prodigal son. Yeah, we were born in a family of five. Uh, first born passed, I was the second born. Third born, Dennis, the one I sing about in Bibles, that was a song, he also died. And the last born, uh, now Brian follows, who's now a doctor, he's, uh, he's okay. And, um, and, um, and, and Isaac was last born, he also passed. So, so for me, death was very real. We, we, saw, we saw everyone dying in the early 1994, 93. Thing is, that's, that's when HIV came in and most people didn't really believe it was HIV. Thank God for people like uh, Phil Bongoli Rutaya, who came up a big star to accept that it's HIV. But most of our families, family died. Many families died down there in Masaka, because I think the first patient for HIV was found in Rakai, very close to our home. And people believed it was witchcraft. They didn't really believe it was, it was anyone it was, it, was, it was a disease. So people like Philip Bongo Rutaya deserve respect because he was a star. And back then he stood up and said, HIV is real. And Philip said, and I'm sick and I'm going to die. And he made a video that they played for us in schools. So literally, Philip helped to kill that anonymity, you know, because HIV was killing people secretly. So for me, I, I, I lost everything. I lost family, I lost, uh, I lost dad, I lost mom. But uh, Jesus picked me up. Jesus picked me up and he adopted me. Yeah? And he took me on and he's done so much. He's healed my heart. So if somebody is, is, is watching right now, I promise you life is never a straight path. No way. But Jesus can pick you up. He can find you anywhere, no matter where you're hiding. Whether you are under the, the, the belly, like Jonah in the fish, he can still find you down there. You know, whether you are in a ditch like Daniel, he can find you there. You know, whether you've lost everything like Esther, your family, he can still pick you up. Yeah. So it's true. It's true. But Jesus has changed that story. He turns water into wine. You know that. At some point, you, you just, you become immune. You just watch. You know that the boat, the, the wind has been blown off my boat. You get angry with God, you get angry with uh, people. You, you develop an independent mind. You think, okay, I'm here by my own, no one really loves me, you know. But right now you come to Rwanda, just at the airport, somebody says, um, Wilson, welcome home. You know, God has given me family all over the world. All over the world. I've seen people see me and cry. I've seen people see me and cry. No man can do that. No man. I've, I've met people here. People live, you know, they, they live whatever they're doing. Oh my goodness, Wilson, good to see you. So see what Jesus can do. Only, only Him can do that. But it was tough. I don't wish any child should go, grow without, without, without a parent. But also, you need to know that there is also something called good pain. Good pain. Bible says like a mother in labor ward. You know, uh, I mean Azala. Yeah, there is pain. I just preached that someone at our church called Good Pain. And I'm writing a book about it. Maybe next time you see me out, it will be out. But there is, there is also what we call good pain. Good pain is literally uh, uh, some of the things we go through. Uh, they can be good pain. But it doesn't make sense. Like when a boy breaks your heart, you know, it, it will never make sense until until years later. You know, so like when you lose your job, like when you lose your parents. I, I realize that right now our church, by God's grace, we take care of about maybe let's say 400 plus orphans. So thank God that uh, I went through what I went through. So I know the pain. That's why when David became king, he remembered Miss Bothes, a crippled guy. So sometimes we go through good pain. Like look at Rwanda now. Look at Rwanda. What a beautiful place. I think, uh, I think I was telling my people that 
I think President Kagame is becoming, he's one of the greatest leaders over time. I, some people might disagree, but uh, he's putting his country first. Look, look, look at the cleanness, look at, uh, look at the roads, look at the street lights, look at... Those things are not just out of nowhere. It's because there's a leader somewhere who, has, who saw the other Rwanda. You get it? So what Rwanda went through was bad, terrible genocide, but it brought President Kagame. It gave birth to. You know, sometimes, sometimes pain is pain, but it's good pain. I cry sometimes. Yeah, I cry sometimes. But, you know, we are very, we are created in a way that uh, we, re we all resemble, life, life resembles exactly what Jesus went through. It is always two fish, it is always five bread, there's always 5,000 needs. That's, so we even, we even forget, uh, we forget the two fish, we, we forget the five bread, but Jesus got them and gave thanks. So what am I saying is that most times the devil pushes you in the corner and shows you what you don't have. You know, like the woman with a missing coin. Jesus talks about that, I think, Luke 15, if I'm not mistaken. A woman lost her coin. She had 10 coins, one, lo one disappeared. Switch, puts on the light, sweeps the entire place. She can't rest until she finds her coin. And then she finds the coin and she says, hey, come rejoice with me. So I feel like we are created in a way that we always forget the nine that are not missing. And we are always pursuing the Nine, the one that is missing, which is okay. That's because the Bible wants you to find the coin. What I mean by the missing coin, I mean that uh, you sometimes don't even feel the love because there is, there is somebody out there who doesn't like you or that you badly want that person to understand you because there is uh, a house you don't have yet, because there is a car you need to buy, because there is a million, five thousand needs. So you don't even, uh, you may find that uh, that uh, the president of this country, you, 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 you are saying he's doing great, he feels like I'm doing nothing, I need to do this, I need to do the airport, I need to do this, I need... So literally you even miss these nine not missing coins. And that's, that's man, that's the way we are wired. So in, a, in, a, in an answer, in a nutshell, I am so grateful to God. Like when I come here, uh, or wherever I've been, I, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of the hotels I sleep in. I'm not worthy to be on your TV. That church is my blood and Mass Orphanage and Worship Night. And of course Celebrity Sundays and uh, God is Generous Gather, things that come with it. But our church started when I was 19. Yeah, certainly kind of the same time with the music. And uh, we started under a tree with nine students. And uh, we gave, we used to give less than a dollar a day. Our church didn't have any sponsor, no capital, no, no capital, no, no one, no Muzungu, not even Namagoye. <laughs> but uh, we just simply went with the word of God. Like Peter went, they told him, go catch fish, it will give you money and pay the, the Pay, pay, pay the the the, the, musolo, the taxes. So literally, that's me. You know the journey. Imagine Peter going to the lake. Peter was a fisherman. He knows professionally that uh, you catch the fish, sell the fish, get money. Now Jesus is flipping his mind. He saying, "Go catch the fish. Don't kill it. Open its mouth and give you money." Peter will be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. You come from heaven. That <laughs> things don't work like that." So literally, it is a journey, sometimes it's a journey of trusting Jesus' word. So we went with nine students with literally God's word, and it didn't make sense. It was like Peter going to catch fish to give him money. And uh, imagine his friends would ask, are you going to the bank? Which bank? Equity? A stand chart? Barclays? He said, no, I'm going to the lake to get money. And uh, so that's exactly me. I, I went with faith, and uh, now our church has grew. It grew to 10 people, 15, 20. 30, 50, then it goes to 10, 
young boys and girls, it shined on us, rained on us, people preached about us. Hey, you have Muyimbi, turn up my pastor, all that. But now I think we've grown to about 5,000 members per Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And you can actually follow us on YouTube. We are still in Humble Church, we are not yet there yet, but we are not where we used to be. And it is teamwork, I'm just lucky to be the team leader who gets the chance to be on TV and brag. <laughs> but uh, you realize that I'm doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, so the church has grown and we do worship nights, we do orphans, uh, we do celebrity Sundays, we do street church, we do, we do God's generous gathering, we do campus move, that's when we send the buses to every university. You come to church for free and we get to know that church is fun, it's happening soon in, in September. Then we do worship nights, that's where we go to stadiums. Actually, I stopped concerts, I do more worship nights. And over 20, 30, 15, 15,000, 20,000 people turn up. So that's what I do, and uh, I hope that next year um, we might have a worship night in Dubai and a worship night in Kigali. Uh, hopefully next year, or, the, or, any, or any other year. Yeah, so I'm, I'm literally praying. That's what I do in Uganda now. Go out, hire out Hsawe soccer stadium, and uh, call people. Miracles happen. Sing, worship, preach. Yeah, I realized that I was more than just a singer. And um, so I try sing, I try preach. And uh, like, like Jesus says, without me you can do nothing. So I'm busy doing nothing, but Jesus does everything. Um, just from the airport, somebody or in the plane. Number one, that I come using Rwanda Air. You know, that's you know, that's a sign that Rwanda is serious. Um, I love the beauty. I love the cleanliness. It looks like there is a leader in Rwanda. You know, and uh, I, I always, I just pray for 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 our president and the president that uh, God will give them the eye when the time is due to 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 find the right people to take on such a beautiful work. I would love to say one thing. One day a rich man was dying and uh, a very young man came to him on his deathbed and he said to him, I wish I had your money. And the rich man said, I wish I had your time. I wish I had your age. Some guys are in prison, in jail, simply because they couldn't forgive someone. One minute can result in 250 years. No, finding someone cheating with your wife, I'm just saying. Then you kill him with a, with a rock, a stone, and then you go in prison for 50 years. A one minute decision can make you a millionaire. A one minute decision can make you a loser. So make sure you make the right choices in life. Number two, wisely pick your friends. Not everyone should be your friends, your friend. Wisely choose your church. Wisely choose the people you hang around with. Number three, don't be lazy. The Bible calls it sluggard. Sluggard literally means wanting gain without pain. You know, people choose today's, why would you carry a, a phone of, of three million when you don't have a piece of land? It is, carry a small one, it is painful, but uh, you, years later. So don't, don't dodge pain. Don't like fruits without fruits. That's what I always say. We, we want the glory, we don't want the story. So that's what I want to tell people. Learn to go through the stages. You want to be president, but you don't be chairman, LOS1 or something. You need to grow through the stages. You need to, to learn. You want to be the manager, okay. Grow with us. Come start as a cook. Trust God. Number three, I, I, number four, I want to tell young people, you can't be shepherdless because this life ends. If, the, if we called you today and we said you are the new manager of Chelsea or Man U or, or Coca-Cola, and then you need to put your, pick your team wisely. You, you know, put people, don't pick people that do what you do. You know, what you are weak at, let someone do it. And then when you are done, put an empty chair on the table and say that empty chair is for God. He does, he handles the impossible. Trust me, at some point you get sick and AIDS, Jesus can heal AIDS. No, don't live stupidly, uh, but uh, you, need, you need to know that Jesus can, God can handle, you can't be godless. 
where do you go when you die? You know, don't, don't be a fool. You can go to hell, and then you, you are a millionaire. Especially, I tell rich people, when you get more rich, people respect you and honor you. You get stupid. You marry four women, you marry five women, you, you do whatever you want. Because everyone is saying, oh, uh, uncle, I need school fees. Uncle, <laughs> then they, they, they praise you the way to hell. And you, you don't need to go, to go loud. I'm a believer. Do you remember the guy who took Jesus' body? The Bible says, He was following Jesus in, in, in secret. So you can, be, you can follow him, you don't have to you know, go to church. Some people be so busy, and then when they die, they bring their dead bodies in church. Trust me, there is, there is a story of Lazarus and, and, and the rich man. So make sure that you, you, you believe in Jesus. Uh, yes, I'm not married yet, and I know it is a song that has been oversung, but I have someone, and when I'm ready, I will, I will let you know why. Like I said, I had so many goals, and uh, I think I'm ready, and I'm seeing someone, and um, it might take a year or less, or more, I'm not sure, and uh, I, I got sick and tired of trying to, trying to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it so many times. When, I, when I, I'll be introducing my, my, my wife to the world, I'll let, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you know why it took so long. Yeah, so right now I'll keep it. And uh, I want to ask people, Olo Kokadi, go, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a millionaire in a palace or a prisoner in jail or a pauper. Jesus Christ loves you because we all die. So I love you all. Don't fear to be great. And thank you, this TV and the management. May the Lord bless you. I pray for 45 more years, 50 years of impact. God bless you.